So I'm having a second go at recording example 13 and I'll probably go just a little bit slower so that hopefully we can um, fix up with how to deal with these f of g of x questions. So y equals cos of in negative inverse sine of x. So let's let f of x, we'll let f of x equal cos x and g of x equal negative sine to the minus 1 of x. And I'm going to sketch both of those. So if I sketch cos x, and remember we're sketching this over its restricted domain, so it's a one-to-one -one function. A cos graph looks like that. And this is pi, pi on 2. 1 and minus 1. And it's got a uh, domain of 0 to pi and a range of minus 1 to 1. And do the same for the inverse sine graph. So sketching the inverse sine graph. There's our axis. It's because it's a negative sine that's down this way. And remember, I'm just pretending to draw that sort of sine graph on the y-axis to get my shape. So this will be negative 1. This here will be 1. We'll be at minus pi on 2. And we'll be at pi on 2. And it'll have a domain of negative 1 to 1. And it'll have a range of minus pi on 2. To pi on 2. So to be defined, uh, I can't do that, I can't do that expansion, um, otherwise it moves off the screen. So to be defined, the range of g of x must be a subset or equal to the domain of f of x. Okay, so if I look at the um, domain of, I oh, sorry, if I look at the range of g of x minus pi on 2 to pi on 2, okay, that's not a subset of this. So that's not a subset of the domain of f of x. So what we have to do is actually restrict negative inverse sine of x so that so that the range of inverse sine of x is part of that domain. And the way we're going to need to restrict it is because the lowest value of the domain is zero, okay, so we need the, the values we can use are only these values here. Because you're looking at what the y values are, the first positive or the first value is, is zero and then we can only have positive values after that. And so that's 0 to pi on 2. So at the moment, the range of g of x, okay, so this is not the case. The range of g of x is a subset of domain x is not the case. Not the case. So we're restricting, we're restricting negative sine to the minus 1 of x, okay, to a domain to a domain of negative 1 to 0. Okay, so I've highlighted, that's the bit that's highlighted in yellow. Now, if we restrict that to a domain of negative 1 to 0, the range for negative inverse sine of x is now 0 to pi on 2. So because the range of g of x has to be a subset of the domain of, it, of uh, f of x, 0 to pi on 2 is now a subset of 0 to pi. So now f of g of x, of x is, um, exists. So we've now got the domain, so therefore the domain 
of f of g of x, which is cos of negative sine to the minus 1 of x, is equal to negative 1 to 0. So these are the... Um, so, so these x values will give... So these give y values... Okay, of naught to pi on 2. So what we do now is we sub the naught, naught to pi on 2. So now, so now, spelling it with an M, well done. So now, sub in naught to pi on 2 in your cos x graph. So now, subbing in the cos x graph. gives y values, gives y values of 0 to 1. Um, I'm highlighting that in um, with a blue highlighter. So 0 to pi on 2, sub that into the cos graph, and that gives y values of 0 to 1, which is your range. Change the pen back there, which is the range. So, domain of cos to the negative 1 of cos, not to the negative 1, of cos of negative sine to the negative 1 of x is equal to minus 1 to naught. range is I uh, wrote it here before range is 0 to, um, 0 to 1 I hope that's a little better